I just got off work. It's Saturday. <clears throat> we haven't talked in a while, have we? In a little while. This isn't really set up right. You're kind of just temporarily sitting in my truck. Ordered new tires today. 275 60 R20s. Which is also known as dubs. I don't know why. But anyways, if you've ever been driving around and you see cars that have like the chrome dub they put the little D-U-B on their cars, and you're like, dub. What the hell is dub? That dummy doesn't even know how to spell dumb. Anyways, dub is slang for 20-inch wheel, I guess? I don't know. Anyways, this truck came with 20s, and so, good lord, man. Expensive as hell. 700, just about 800 bucks from Tire Rack, but, you know, that's okay. Um best price I could find and then uh, Pep Boys will mount and balance them for uh, I think it was 60 bucks for all four tires or something like that so I'll pick them up this week I ordered them this morning and they actually come in um, you can have them shipped to your house for free or if you pick it up from the distribution center which is 20 miles away from me you get like a 50 something dollar credit so I was like um, wait free shipping but if I pick them up I get a credit so I did the credit Hell yeah. Um, now, I'm a little bit behind and it's going to storm again. It's Saturday. I worked all day for my company, you know, driving truck. And um, I got four hours to be 25 miles away to pick up my nine-year-old today. Now, here's the deal with that. My older son has friends that are older and he does sleepovers. So, this is not my weekend to have my kids. And so usually on the weekend that my ex-wife has the kids, instead of doing something with the kids, they don't do anything, sadly enough. Um, my boy will sleep over his friend's house often, quite often, very often. Well, that leaves my younger son nothing to do because nobody's going to do anything with them. So I made plans with my ex-wife that I'm going to go pick my boy up as soon as my oldest son goes and sleeps over his friend's house, he doesn't know, I'm going to go snatch up my youngest son and I'm going to take him back to my house and he is going to cook me a steak on the grill. And I got it soaking right now in soy sauce. That's the trick guys. Soak it in soy sauce for like four or five hours. The salt really gets in there and tenderizes it real nice and the flavor, that's your trick. So, we're going to pick him up around 4.30. I'm going to head out there uh, to Wilmington Island, pick up my son, shoot back to the house. He doesn't know. Shoot back to the house. He's going to cook me steak, macaroni, and cheese dinner. Uh, and then we're probably going to go play some video games or something over here at Brewers or something. He's just going to have some daddy time. And then, uh, you know, then we're going to go back to the house. And we're going to chill, watch a movie, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, get breakfast, and then drop him off. Then, I'm going to mow yards. I have four yards I have to cut, and I have a field I have to cut. So what I figured I'll do first and foremost is cut this field with the riding mower. So in the bed of the truck, I have my riding mower. And, uh, you know, it's the Craftsman LT 1042 inch with a 16 horsepower Kohler engine. Uh, we did some work to it recently to get it running good. And so we're going to go ahead and use it on this field and do a little bit of video of it just so you guys can see it in action. It was donated to me by a guy who said, go do great things. So we're doing great things. We're gonna do this field. This field gets, it's gonna, she's gonna give me $40 added to the $80 she owes me. So pretty soon you guys are gonna see her finally pay me. Um, she's gonna pay to charity uh, at dansvlog.com, www.dansvlog with a V.com. And uh, you'll see that charity go up some more. Um, and I got, Another customer that owes me some money, so they need to pay, and then I got two more customers that are going to owe me this weekend, and so, and then we're into October, we're only going to have about two more cuts, maybe one in November, and that's going to be it, that's it for the season, so we're just about at the end of our season, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to work on our equipment, we're going to work on um, doing like the valve adjustments and all that sort of stuff to the Honda. To the to the trimmer uh, to the to the weed eaters the steel weed eaters we're going to do maintenance this this winter and stuff like that and we're going to do a lot of house washing this winter so we're headed up right now to do this little field we did it about mm, a month ago 
I think, but I didn't video it. But when I got the mower the next day, I used this mower until the belt broke, and then I went and I bought a new belt, put a new belt on it, and then finished it, and just wanted to check the mower out, make sure everything was workable, and then we did the video on fixing the deck because the deck belt, the blade belt, was always stuck in the on position. You can never stop the blades from turning. And so we fixed that, and I got an awesome video that shows you how to fix that. Um, and I give credit to uh, Terrell uh, Fixes All, or Terrell Fixes Everything. Terrell Fixes All, whatever. Terrell Dactyl. I linked to him in my video, in that video. So check out that video, and then check out Terrell's video, because Terrell gives a lot more information about the mower. Um, so it's really great. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to mow this field. And the reason why I'm bringing you guys with me is because I don't know when I'm going to get this video edited and I don't know when I'm going to get the houses edited because I'm so pressed for time and I know I got company tomorrow night. I don't know when I'm going to edit and so I'm trying to put this together for you guys because somebody said, hey Dan, can you do a video on loading and unloading the mower, the riding mower from the back of your truck? And I thought, what a fantastic opportunity to burn some film. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you guys how I get this mower out of the back of this truck with the current configuration with six foot long aluminum ramps, okay? Um, it could be very dangerous, but there is some safety features that you need to know about. And if you don't have it, I'm gonna show you how to make safety features available for ramps um, that you use. Um, whether they're wood ramps or aluminum ramps or whatever the ramps are that you use, there's some safety features that you need to know about. We are going to discuss that right now. So what we got is, I believe they're six foot tall. Let's check it out. Yep, they're six foot tall. I'm, uh, I'm like 5'8". <clears throat> I'm like 5'8". 6'1", um, 210 pounds. I'm like 5'8"-ish and um, so these are six foot tall. Now, you have straps. These straps will save your life, and I'll show you exactly how. You should be able to see this, I hope. But these straps, this is a regular cargo strap you'd buy at any auto store, Walmart, Home Depot, whatever, to strap things down into the bed of a truck. Okay, this one happens to have a hook like this. Some of them will have a bigger hook here. Whatever. Either way, as long as this fits, into the circle where your trailer goes like your chain okay if you don't have that here then maybe the back of your bumper curl it underneath you can curl it right here or you can put it where the chain of your trailer goes and what you do is you pull it nice and snug and now you see what this does this keeps the ramp from being able to kick out if your tire spins and kicks the ramp out and then you fall. This stops it from kicking out. That's what this is for. Now if you got a wood ramp and you can't do this, like wrap it like this one is, then you can drill a hole and put a nut and a bolt on the top, you know, a nut on top with an eye bolt, with the eye bolt right here and you can hook and then you can hook to here, all right? But this strap is what's gonna keep you from kicking your ramps out or from going left to right and you really seriously hurting yourself and you will seriously hurt yourself if you're climbing up your ramp and your ramp fails all right you're going to break a collarbone at a minimum at a minimum you're going to break a collarbone and you're done for most of the season so be very very careful about that all right those straps are there for a reason not only that but you also have you have your angle and your pitch right here, right? So as you go up on your angle and then it pitches down, what's gonna happen is your mower deck is gonna scrape like hell right here and you're probably not gonna be able to make the transition. So you need to make sure that your ramps are long enough to the height of your tailgate. If not, such as my case, it's not, you can add wood to your ramp like a 2x12, you can lay a 2x12 right here to like here. And that's going to give you a, less of an angle. But you're going to slip on the wood that's going to screw you up really bad. Look for 8 foot ramps or look for the ramps that are angled. All right, These are straight ATV ramps meant for high clearance. They make ramps 
and I'll see if I can link to them in the description. They actually make aluminum ramps that go like this and curve, a nice slow curve. That's gonna take that steep pitch out up there, all right? Look for those, they're not cheap, but you can bring your riding mower, your zero turn, all that sort of stuff right up and it'll curve and it'll go right into the bed of your truck. All right, a lot safer than this setup right here. Now, there is a way to beat this and that's to find a curve. So let me show you. Okay, now look at the angle of the dangle. It's a lot more flat. It doesn't have so much angle and then pitch. Okay, that's a lot more flat and the, the bed of the truck is going down now instead of the natural higher up that pickup trucks have. And what I did is you pull your tires right into the gutter. Right into the gutter. And now where the tailgate is, where everything's at, you took all that angle out. That's going to make loading and unloading much safer. how easy that was to load. Unloading is just the opposite. But with unloading you can actually just put it in neutral and let it go. So anyways that was loading it and loading it you know you just drive it right on. Now unloading it you can do it so much easier. You can just let it roll right off. Now there's a little piece right there that the, the um, the deck might get caught on, on that aluminum that's sticking up. I need to beat that down, but check it out. All you gotta do is put it in neutral and let it roll back. Now, like I said, it might get caught on the deck. We'll see. Yeah, there's a up part. getting caught on the deck got caught right here on this little edge and over here but that's all right. I mean you see how easy that was right never drive it off if you don't have to you know what I mean only drive it on if you need to and so using the curb takes that angle out and that is how I load and unload my tractor into the back of my full-size truck and like I said I got 20s on here so this, this truck is the, what do they call it, the bighorn? So it sits up kind of high, kind of sits proud, you know? Um, but if you got just a regular truck, just a regular pickup truck, it might not fit that high or sit that high. Might be a little bit easier for you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mow this field. I believe I'm gonna get soaked. Look how dark. I'm surrounded. So we're going to mow this field. It's like three-quarter acre. I think most people think it's an acre to three-quarter acre. So all the way out to the street. We're going to go ahead and mow this up. Get this squared away. I'm going to put you guys in the bed of my truck in the shade. And try to get done here. At least what I can. This really sucks, man. <laughs> the end of the season and I'm falling so far behind.
job mower. That thing's badass, man. What I like most about it is a piece of shit. So I don't care. I just, I'm just using it. It rocks, man. It rocks. I didn't get much done. It started to come down pretty good. We'll see if we can ride this out. I don't care if I get wet. I just don't want any thunder or lightning. So I might just have to leave you guys in here and mow in the rain. I gotta get progress done, man. Got to. Well, we did it, guys. I used the umbrella. It got really bad. Really windy. I mean, there's standing water over here. But it's all done. Field mowing. Super simple, super easy. You don't even have to worry about weed eating all the time. I weed eated it last time. I ain't gonna do it again. No need. Just mow in the field. So, anyways. Now I'll bring my truck over there to the curb. I'll set the ramps up. And I'll go ahead and load up and go. That sucked. That sucked. I got soaked. Anyways, my feet are soaked. My socks are soaked. I'm not actually too soaked. Uh, the umbrella worked out pretty good. Got the field done. It's uh, almost 2 o'clock. Took almost an hour because when it got really bad, you saw we went into the truck, but um, I mowed a little bit with the umbrella and then I hid beside the truck because it got really, really bad. Um, but I didn't want to get in the truck soaking wet, so I just hid with the umbrella and crouched down on the riding mower and just sat there and waited till it lit up. And then I went and I finished, so I don't know. That's the cool thing about field mowing though, man. I mean, that's something you guys could think about pick up a little cheap mower you know riding mower or whatever and just do field mowing too you know you can pretty much rain or shine those it doesn't matter as long as it's chopped down that's all the client wants stay out of trouble anyways that's how you load and unload a riding mower into the back of a pickup truck safely I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow tell me about the whistle <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,